we're doing it at a pretty much a good moment. You know, I could tell my story saying, oh, I lost my job, uh, my bank account had been seized, I'm a poor victim of everything. Uh, but not at all. This has no. been such a vivid moment. We were living in a zombie society, already dead. Hey all, I'm just back from the Brownstone Institute conference in Girona, Spain, and it was a fantastic gathering with incredible people, uh, intellectual discussions for two or three days solid. So here's the first of a few interviews I grabbed there. It's with the excellent Dr. Louis Fouché, and he has been a hero in response to the craziness of the uh, pandemic era. So enjoy this very positive message, a lot of learnings from Dr. Fouché, and it's just a classic, I think. So here you go. I'm here in Girona at the fantastic Brownstone Institute conference, and I met a dynamic young doctor uh, who has achieved so much during the craziness of COVID. So Louis Touche, you gave a fantastic talk yesterday, and now you're going to give me just a short version of your experience and how there's hope for the future against these demagogues that we're up against. Okay, hi Ivor, thank you much for the interview. Uh, I'm Dr. Louis Fouché, I'm a, a doctor in critical care and specialist about uh, leukemia, lymphoma and, and metallurgic disease. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the chance to take care of uh, COVID severe patients and to um, find such a difference between what I was leaving in my intensive care ward and what was said by the media and the government that it became painful. And I said, is there's going to be somebody that is going to open his mouth and say this is not reality this disease exists but it can be cared it can be cured quite easily uh, we should do it early and not late in intensive care just like we do all the time and stop scaring people and destroying our society our economy our social relationship uh, not taking care of the old person um, doing bad things to the young people and kids, you know, and I was becoming upset behind my computer. And I heard a voice telling me, uh, if nobody does it, maybe you should do it. And so I started to take a microphone and started to go in the media and said, what was the reality I was living in the everyday life? So the first thing I can say is, uh, I don't have any conflict of interest with the pharmaceutical industry, with the vaccine industry, with the data industry, and I'm free in speech. Uh, and um, I started testimony and testifying of, of what was going on. And a lot of people started to join. Uh, researcher, scientist, artist, mm -hmm. doctors, citizens. And we gathered together and say, okay, um, we have to go through all this and try not to become mad and crazy and keep our mind because it's really important not turning crazy in this moment when we think to be in a cuckoo's nest. And uh, so we mostly at the beginning try to reassure each other of what we were living in the everyday life. But rapidly we said we have to do something. And we started gathering testimony of the people. We started um, doing art, poetry, poems, theater, opera, songs, uh, because we felt that art was essential. Our government said they were non-essential, but we said they are essential. We need that to, be, to not turn mad, to keep our, uh, our sake. And um, we did science, and we worked so much, so much, and discovered that most of the publications were fraudulent, that we couldn't be trustful but with what was published in medicine and in science in general, and that the religion of scientism that was going on with fact checker and all was a religion. It had nothing to do with science. Science is about doubt, it's about contradiction, it's about always trying to be doubtful about what's going on and discover something else. And so uh, we gathered a lot of information for the people and created a group named Independent Scientific Council in France, which gathered uh, which got the people with no conflict of interest whatsoever with the industry. And we did a show every Thursday evening and we published paper on our website and all. We've been harassed so much, you know, uh, by the media. We've been crushed away. Our career has been torn apart. And, but we discovered marvelous people, um, impressive, uh, intuitive and intellectual persons. 
and that would enlighten us with their view over the world and the idea that this COVID affair was not only a sanitary problem. It's a sanitary pro problem, but if you unfold it, it's just like a folded monster. You unfold it, it's a science problem. It's a medical system problem. It's a social problem. We're, we're getting poorer and poorer in France. People are queuing to have popular soup in the evening in Marseille now, uh, which didn't happen before. And um, it's a societal problem. People got afraid of each other, uh, fighting for one meter 60 of distanciation, fighting for a story of mask. We don't have to fight for that. We're brother and sisters in this society and we should help each other. And so that was really stunning for us. And we started to try and find solution, not only telling the problem, but finding solution. So we did nonviolent communication and gave tool to the people and dealing with nonviolence to say, you shouldn't be crossed one against each other and, and separating your family, not talking to your brother or your sister or your mother because of vaccination affair. We don't give a shit about that. This is not important. This is an anecdote. anecdote. And, and we shouldn't be separated because of that, because separation is the bed for totalitarianism. If you atomize the people, and that's Anna Arendt who, saw, who told that, who is a, a philosopher of totalitarianism, you are preparing the way, you are paving the way for totalitarianism. And we saw progressively this totalitarian drift. So if you keep on unfolding the monster, you understand it's also a media and information problem. Uh, with media not testifying anymore of reality, but trying to create propaganda to make a virtual world in which you live in fear permanently with a terrifying terrorism by the state all the time. You should be afraid of the COVID. You should be afraid of the war. You should be afraid of another war. You should be uh, uh, afraid of the bed bugs. And it never stops. You're terrified all the time. And anytime somebody's trying to terrify you, you want to take the control over you. And we should be really aware of this moment where we are uh, trained to be afraid. And this is my job as a critical doctor, not to be afraid in very stressful moments. You know, a person is not breathing anymore, it has no circulation anymore. I should be the calm person and have a year okay of the preoccupation and, and the principal things that we should do at that moment. Our society is terrified by everything. It has no resiliency anymore. And we should get back to the hierarchy of priorities. What is priority? Is it to have a mask or thing like that? No, it's to take care of each other. So it's a media crisis, but it's also a political crisis. Um, our politics now, and I discovered that, you know, with, with uh, astonishment, we're all corrupted. They were uh, the armed um, force of the industry. The, the prolongement of international cooperation and the law that they were making were wrong. And they were gathering all the power, all the judiciary power. You were judged for things because you were not speaking correctly of, because of the COVID. It's crazy. Normally, we should have free speech and contradiction. This is really important. But we didn't have the right in France anymore. You uh, legislative power, um, low uh, power, you know, they did laws to put you in jail in your own house at night, uh, being 30 in the parliament, and they did that from one day to another. This is completely crazy. Um, executive power, they send the police to arrest you. We had drone in, in, in front of the beach um, to, to sue people or to, to find people because they didn't wear the mask or they went out and, uh, during the lockdowns. This happened in our own countries, which are supposed to be freedom countries and democracy. So they gather the monetary power at the same time. Now, money is not your money anymore. And we understood that very harshly because our bank account has been seized because of our choice not to be vaccinated. And we understood at that very moment that your money is not your money. And that, that's quite a shock, you know? And um, so they have the monetary problem and they have the narrative and mediatic power. And those, those to power together are the institution that we need to keep a society together. But they got to the point where they were the most um, contradictive 
uh, counterproductive. Uh, they did the invert of what they were supposed to do. The media is supposed to inform you with the reality that you can say, no, they only tell you lies all the time. Con maximum counterproductive thing. The monetary system is supposed to enrich each other of uh, your talent, my talent, their talent, and we are more rich uh, all the time. No, it's capture and expropriation from wealth by very few people. A person processing half of humanity. This is just completely crazy and counterproductive. Um, mm, stock exchange. You now have a, um, processing, a nanosecond processing stock exchange with uh, AI uh, applications, and their name are Razor, Shark, Gorilla, Sniper. This is the name they have to try and get the more money about speculating with what you eat and what the third world country try to do to help. So this is just completely counterproductive. Um, um, the same for each of our institution. And the last one, but least, is the healthcare system. The healthcare system not anymore gets you in health. It makes you sick. The crisis of the opiates uh, and, and morphine uh, and fentanyl in the United States is, is a huge testimony about that. The main cause of mortality now is about secondary effect of products. And we have a huge sanitary crisis going on with the vaccine jab secondary effects. And we have huge denial of the whole scientific uh, society, of our whole society. They don't want to see it because it's too hard to see. And that's an interesting point because we tried to give the information to the people and the information was there. If you wanted to have it, you could have it. Uh, what were the medication working for the COVID? Why the jab were um, not qualitative enough? Were done too, too fast? Were not effective? Uh, not enough effective? Were, well, had secondary effect, which was unbearable. And so if you wanted to have the information, you could have it. Why didn't they grab it? And that was our main question. And we started to do otherwise. Let's give energy to the people. Let's reconciliate. Let's not try to convince them or give them information because those information are just like virus. We try to give them and that would break their integrity and they don't have the force to change. They don't have the energy, the stamina to go through that. They're already completely out. Of, and, and so let's give them energy. Let's share good moments, beauty, poetry, uh, art, um, playing with the children. Uh, having moments in nature and reconciliate with each other with good moments. And that, what we started to do in kind of a non-violent path, and this was really productive, family reconciliated. And a person, when he starts to get back energy, he can see things he couldn't see before. And you will not have to show it. You will see him, it by himself. So that's now the path we're trying to do to reconciliate our society. And so a lot of groups created everywhere, everywhere from uh, the group we started, and local groups created to help each other. And we have kind of a network, a human internet, um, which is done in France, where people are helping, celebrating together, uh, doing a moment when they, they are showing movies and discussing about that. And we open the subject. It's no more only a sanitary crisis. It's a whole crisis of our society, and we have to propose, propose something else. So we dealt with permaculture, other way of schooling, other way of caring, um, getting back the old knowledge about plants, about uh, Chinese medicine. I don't know what. I don't know nothing about that, but that's interesting. And we should be curious, you know, trying to branch out. And uh, mm, we're doing it at a pretty much a good moment. You know, I could tell my story saying, oh, I lost my job, uh, my bank account had been seized, I'm a poor victim of everything. Uh, but not at all. This has no. been such a vivid moment. We were living in a zombie society, already dead. Nothing could happen. I was supposed to be a doctor, wealthy with my swimming pool and my three cars. This is not gonna happen. And, and that's pretty much a chance, you know? I'm grateful for that. And we did a text with my wife about the grateful uh, that we have, the gratitude that we have for all what happened because it kind of woke us up.
from a, a long Sleeping Beauty thing, you know. Uh, and, we, and the prince can. Maybe the prince is Emmanuel Macron or, or Klaus Schwab. Uh, we, we, should, we wanted somebody else, but uh, that's all right. Yeah. Um, now, well, perhaps Prince of Darkness would be more appropriate there with <laughs> those guys. But listen, I, that was superb. And I just love the way you pulled that all together, like in your talk yesterday. Excellent, Lewis. I know you're running, traveling now. We said we keep this tight, but uh, fantastic work you're doing. And where can people see more? I'll put the links down below. Uh, I know you're trying to meet in real life and make this real, which is hugely important, but also just for awareness, uh, uh, links are useful. Yeah, I can try and answer. Uh, my first answer would be, um, you can watch the exemplarity of what has been done, but if you don't have it near you, create it, gather the people. And you will see, as from the very moment you gather people together, you will have what we call in France, FHF, fucking human factor. That means <laughs> it's going to be hard. Nothing's going to turn the way you want it. People are going to cross. That money will be a problem. The power will be a problem. The ego will be a problem. And you will have to transform the fucking human factor in fascinating human factor. Because... You can do so beautiful thing when you gather people together. And that's what we discover. Alone, you don't have any power. Mm, Alone, together. you will be crushed. And so I saw those people in Marseille, my town. You know, a guy went alone on the beaches because we live near the sea. And he, he, tried, he did survey with the people, uh, saying, what do you think about the vaccination? You know, and it turned the question in order to make people think. And, uh, but not trying to, to push mm. anything. And he told the people, you know, I represent a group. Uh, we are a, a big group, and a, but he was alone. And if he felt that the people were like pitting, you know, when you're fishing, they, mm. okay, there's something. Oh, do you want to give me your number? And, and maybe Apple's doing it. And in three weeks, there were 300. Oh. And so, you know, it's all about the legitimacy that you give to yourself. What we do is just. And it's justice, and we should go farther, and not being stopped by anything. And this is about transgression. We will have to transgress in any way. And so I have tons of examples of those transgressions which went till the end and became institution. And real important thing for the people to stay together and to build a better world. So you can find what we do in several spaces, but we try to do a reticulated, distributed system with no head. No mm. pyramidal thing, because otherwise we would be shot to half. Yeah. And so the, the main thing we try to do is let raise the local thing, but interconnect everybody in a network. And, and the one show to each other what we do. And we all have a different mission. Some people will do video, some other will do um, movie, uh, other do poetry, other will act uh, in the street with activism and demonstration. Other one will be rich and discuss with the rich people. Other will be connected to the politics and they will discuss with policy. We all have a role to play and the right compass to find out what to do. Where is joy? Where do you have joy? Because all of that is, humor, is humorful. You, you, you can laugh about that. The only, the, 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 what's the only risk in the end? To die. But you know what? Eventually, we're all going to die. So yep. let's, let's live really in the meanwhile. Memento um, Mori, absolutely, Lewis. And you know, yeah, that's perfect. I need to get something going of, of, this, of this model in, in Ireland, and I think all over the world we should. You mentioned there's a video there. I'll, I'll upload or include a link to it if it gives a broader view. Yeah, yeah. yeah you uh, can find a lot of videos. We did a very um, funny things. It's about GTA, which is a video game, very violent. Oh, where, I know. Uh, the most you transgress, the most you open the map, and that's just awful for the kids, but uh, really a torn, a twisted model. And we got that, and we tried to find some spaces of peace, of beauty in the game. In GTA. And they took a 3D scan, <laughs> yeah, they took the 3D scan of my face, and they put on a character, and then they told me to put words in it. And it's all about trying to getting out of the matrix, mm. getting out of the Plato's cave, of the Truman Show. You call it out, whatever you want. Mm. This is the same story. Getting out of this virtual bullshit and try to find some spaces of truth, of confidence, of creativity, and you can find it, yeah. even in GDA. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We got to bring back righteousness. I mean, principle, ethical, 
consideration. That's been lost over decades. And what you're talking about is bringing it back in real world with real people. And this is what we need. Superb. Thanks so much, Lewis. Thank you, Ivan. Au revoir. Merci. So that'll do it, folks. Uh, links to Dr. Fouché's various resources are down below. And of course, a link to Brownstone Institute also. They are putting out incredible scientific journalism. And if you can go over there and support the guys, that would be excellent. And thanks, of course, to all my Patreon and PayPal supporters. Enable me to keep working on getting the correct messages out there uh, and also it helps with getting occasionally to go to these events and network with all of the other great people uh, we all need to join forces as dr fouché said uh, come together as people of ethics and principle to counter the kind of destructive and insane globalism that's kind of after all of us at the moment but it's all to play for and uh, we'll get there we'll win in the end thank you